Okay, so today we're going to begin um, a example of energy harvesting. And again, we're using the passive damping model, having a resistor, which is going to be like a charging circuit for a cup. It's going to effectively play the role of a charging circuit or an external device. But again, we're using this resistor attached to the piezo to understand uh, how much energy is really being uh, given uh, or given to the external uh, device or charger. Uh, one important thing to note is that we cannot, uh, you know, however much energy we're putting in to the piezo, you can only get that much energy out. So um, whenever you are doing your calculations, you can always double check on how much mechanical energy you're sort of putting into your piezo. It should never be greater than that, which is coming out. Usually it's much less. Um, another point about the uh, problem last time, where we, in the last lecture, where we put a force on the piezo. Well, obviously this is a reactive force. We put a force on the piezo, and then I, 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 I describe the force being let's say constant you know this is this is long much longer than the resonance frequency uh but much shorter than the um it's much shorter than the rc time constant uh and then we have this case where we have the charge building up to a certain point and then it decays down but really what happens what happens if we decrease the force to zero right here let's say the charge is zero and the force is zero actually the charge is going to the charge is going to flip down to the other side and then it's going to continue to decay. So essentially what we did here uh, by draining the charge and then after draining the charge and then we release the force back to zero then the charge is becomes actually negative instead because we sort of displace the charge that would normally happen. So let me just draw, draw it out again. Um, so let's say this is the force profile. Let's, I'm just going to draw it like this, just to make it more simple. Um, this will be the dotted line describing zero for force. This will be the dotted line describing zero for charge. So last time I said that we increase our force, and then we leave it constant. That would mean our charge would immediately increase and then it would decay. Right? And this is for the case where we have a piezo with a resistor. I'm going to draw in black the case where we have no resistor. So we increase our force and then we decrease it. The case in black would be the charge increases and then as we release the force, obviously the charge becomes zero again. However, for the case, I'm going to draw in red, where we actually have this decay and we destroy all the charge or we, we drain it to the resistor, we're actually going to have a negative. We're going to have a negative force here. Right? There will be negative force. Uh, so effectively the charge become negative. One way we can understand uh, the charge balance is that the rate of charge is both dependent on the force being applied, its function, and also uh, the current which is going over this resistor. So we're going to really see that in this next example. Here uh, again we're going to have this piezo and we're going to have a force but this time we're going to define the force as a function of time um, and it's going to be a sinusoidal function so we're going to have this force sine omega t um, so we can find the rate of change because the, the amount of charge on the piezo it depends on the current being drawn and the force being applied and the history of the charge being developed because as you can see, charge is changing with time. How how far down this goes depends on this. So if we if we were to, uh, for example, decrease our force right here, back to zero, then we would he we would see something like this. We would only see a small dip, it's because it, uh, this total amount has to be what 
this 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 point from here to here when you decrease that charge um, when you decrease that force it has to be equal to d times f that same amount of charge becomes negative here the same amount of charge becomes negative uh, the charge goes to zero but here if you drop it right here the charge won't go to zero if you drop if you if you if you let approximately you know does the charge drain out completely and then you remove the force then you'll have exactly df back here but really the delta charge is what df is telling you because you don't know how much charge you started with and it's independent of um so really a, a better way to write this equation or a more comprehensive way would be the delta charge is equal to d times the delta f because charge can be for example you could have charge for different reasons you could have charge left over uh from uh, from maybe like it's a heating you know if you heat the piezo charge develops and then you apply force and then you get a different charge well it's the delta charge due to the force or you could say d q d f equal d this is <laughs> this is another example of the uh, understanding the piezo d constant as a uh, differential equation. Okay, so back to this example, we're applying a sinusoidal force, which is going to be more the typical case for a piezoelectric energy harvesting. Uh, what this actually means, because it's sinusoidal, it has equal positive and negative portions. So if we apply a negative force or a positive force, if you want to say uh, define positive as con you know as as tension uh, we're really actually pulling on this piece at the same time which may not always be the case if you have something sitting on top of it vibrating uh, but it doesn't actually matter because what we're really going to be concerned about is the delta force the change in force of the change in time whether we have this equation or we have you know something like this where at zero at, or at zero um, where the force is never in tension, the force is never in compression. That's not exactly. That's not. That's not the most important thing. If you have a force like this, you know this is always in compression. Let's say, uh, but practically it's not going to matter. Really, what's going to matter is delta force, delta time. So let's start to begin because the, the, the one tricky part of this is that the current depends on the amount of charge, and but the amount of charge also depends on how much charge has been drained previously. So we're going to be um, doing this example. First, we have to set up the equation. So what equation do we set up? We don't know the amount of charge. It's going to be actually decaying. So if we're going to draw the charge out over time, uh, I would expect that the charge would start large, it would start to decay, and this is exaggerated. At some point, it would reach a steady state. So it wouldn't be, so there would be one portion of the charge which would be, you know, some constant It would be decaying, and there would be another portion which would be uh, consistent with time, which is called the steady state response. So right now we're interested in the steady state response, which is a lot easier to solve. If you wanted uh, this transient response, you should do the Laplace transform, uh, which I'm not going to get into here, but we're going to solve the steady state response in a simple fashion right now. Or if you want, for example, you don't want to have a sinusoidal input, you want to have a step function. So step functions are classically something you use with the Laplace transform. Uh, but you can also go for the steady state solution of that. Okay. So, well, sort of. <laughs> uh, so let's start drawing out, let's write out the equations here. Uh, the equations we're going to be using is dq dt. So what's the change of charge on the electrodes? So the change of charge on the electrodes over time is the derivative of the force. So um, the charge, the delta charge due to the force is um, times the piezoelectric d coefficient. So if you take the derivative of this, we get d f o omega sine Omega t. I don't care if it's sine or cosine. Uh, it's actually not that important. Um, well, let's just call it. Let's just call it cosine. We only live once. We should just do the right thing. Let's just call it cosine. If you want to do further analysis, it may, it may be important. And then the char then the then the then the uh, charge loss or change of charge due to current, which is going to be minus. 
Um, so what we're going to say is that uh, the voltage obviously is equal to Q C. Q equals C V. Sorry. So the and the charge on the the current on a resistor is equal to V over R. So we have Q divided by C, which is the voltage divided by R. That's the and, and keep in mind this is time dependent, so it's not just the value. So here we can write down, write this in maybe a bit more rigorous. So we bring all this to this side, so 1 over C R Q um, minus D looking like something we're familiar with, a differential equation. Now we know the, sh the form. We know the form of uh, the solution, uh, which is going to be charge is going to be some number times sine omega t. That's the forcing function. It's going to be some kind of function of that. Here we have cosine. Um, that's going to deal in with the sine uh, conventions here. But let's continue to solve the problem, uh, assuming that this is the right way. So the derivative of this is called q naught. The derivative of q um, then would be something like q uh, q naught times sine omega t. So we just put that straight in there. So we would have q naught omega sine omega t plus 1 over cr q naught sine omega t minus d f o omega cosine omega t equals 0. What we should typically do in this, these terms is we put this back on the other side, let's change colors. Yay! Okay, D F O uh, cosine omega t, and there's an omega here, equals. We can bring the Q's out. Q naught We can bring the sine omega out. We're just factoring this part right here. Um, this omega stays inside plus 1 over C R. Okay, so this is the actual solution we're, we're trying to solve for again. We want to solve for this QO because that's going to tell us the, the, the final equation. So, what do we have here? Um, Really, you don't, we don't care about the, the phase. This is just going to tell us it's on a phase. Uh, so we're just going to assume that these cancel out. I'm not that interested in um, the details here. Um, so the, we can tell those cancel out. Uh, then the phase exactly is going to be determined uh, partially by uh, you know, how much is being spent out. Uh, obviously, if R equals 0, uh, they're going to be completely the force, and the charge is going to be completely... Uh, in phase or out of phase, depending on how you define charge. Uh, but depending on how much you're leaking, um, that's going to determine the phase uh, sort of loss. Okay, so this QO is equal to omega. So is equal to omega D F O divided by Omega plus one over CR. Now that's the rate of charge uh, which is being spent. And then we can make this a simpler equation, um, but let us continue to the next part.
So we just found a equation for Q. Um, and the equation for current or charge is I squared R. Um, and we decided that current was a C Q was a V over R equals the current, which equals a Q equals C V. Q equals C V. Um, then Q over C equals V. So basically, we have Q divided by C, R, we're doing the same thing over again, that's the current. And we square that and multiply by R. Alright, so Q squared divided by C squared, R. Now that equals, this equals the power, sorry, that equals the power. So the power is equal to Q squared, this is reiterating what I just did, C squared R. And if you can remember, um, this doesn't have any terms that we can easily cancel out, but basically, and then, and then while Q, this is Q naught, equals omega d force, which is sort of arbitrary, um, divided by omega plus 1 over CR. 